And now it's time to welcome in our series stat man, Clinton Fowler for Fowler's Facts. We're going to go heavy on Ken Roxon here. Now, behind the scenes, Roxon have been making huge bike changes. A lot of people were saying he's chasing his own tail. He's in his own head. Any cliche you want. Then at Daytona press day, he told me, no, I'm good now. We have the bike where we want it. Just small tweaks. So I thought maybe Daytona would be a great race, but it wasn't results-wise. I did not see this coming. Clinton, did you see anything in the data that indicated maybe a Roxon, at least podium, if not win, was in the offing? You know, we just, the data said that it was coming. It shouldn't have been a surprise. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. He right. he had been second fastest qualifier for three weeks. Mm -hmm. So he had had the speed. He just hadn't shown it in the main events. Um, if you look at the first six weeks, he averaged eighth in qualifying. So there was clearly something to his point to you. He had clearly found something he had gotten comfortable. And it just wasn't until Indy that he really put it together in the main event. And in the main event in Indy, he set three of the fastest 10 overall laps. So amazing ride end to end you know got that whole shot and just won so yeah great ride in indy for him daniel what did you see from a from a head perspective what did you see from roxon out there well, i just think back to the clip we showed on the broadcast of him going through the whoop section that just gnarly right up the middle his balance his precision that was the toughest part of the track and the way he went through there is what he looked like everywhere he was just perfect with his balance and his line choice and his placement so you talk about the speed i saw a guy who was comfortable on a track that is not very comfortable uh, my question for you clinton is the, the gap it, it's been a while since ken roxon's won i know cooper webb had a little bit of a gap there too but where are we at with kenny how long of a gap was it from when to win yeah you know it seemed like a long time but i think that's mostly because we remember him taking off most of the season last year, right? But it was only 17 races that he had raced that he hadn't won. So not super long, especially when you compare it to some of the other guys' winless streaks that were broken that are in our field today. You got a guy like Justin Barsha who had a 55 race winless streak <clears throat> that was broken in 2019, right? Like forever. Um, even Cooper Webb this year broke a longer one when he won in Tampa and that was a 20 race one. And Roxon himself had a 25 race winless streak that he ended in, in St. Louis. Um, when he was coming back from his wrist injury. But Weege, the one that, that kind of sticks out for me is Jason Anderson. I look at last year, Jason Anderson broke a 47 race winless streak. And then he went on to win seven races. Like he, that was just an incredible unlock for him. So Weege, what do you think? Do you think he's got the capability to pull what Anderson did last week or last year and get a few more wins? Man, it's still, I know this is crazy to say this on the back end of him just winning a race on the Suzuki. But when Anderson was winning, let's be honest, he's doing it for Monster Energy Kawasaki, which had already had so much success in the series. They were just two years removed from winning the title with Eli Tomac. This Suzuki thing is great. It's an awesome story. But you see a straight-up win streak where Roxon is the best guy in the series and is winning seven or so races over the last four in a row like Anderson did last year. That's still a bit of a stretch for me. I'd be glad to be proven wrong on that one. But it uh, does bring up the whole topic of these long streaks. I think the main thing everybody wanted to know Forget about how Rox, how long it's been for Roxon. How long it had it been since Suzuki had won one of these? We had 111 races. It had been back to, to Roxon himself with 2016. So it had been a long, long time. Um, uh, we won't dive into the full top 10 of them, but Suzuki, Suzuki's had some long streaks. Um, but yeah, longest streak in, in the history of Supercross at 111 races. You know, we they're there is an, another manufacturer that's got an active winless streak. Gas Gas has got 41 races. Daniel, Justin Barsh has been really good lately. He could he started that streak. He got their first win. Does he end it this year? Does he pull a Kenny and, and do it for his manufacturer? Kenny helps Suzuki out. Maybe Barsha helps Gas Gas out and gets him another one. But uh, I think it's very, very close. As long as he stays where he's at mentally right now, where he, I mean, he's just aggressively pegged to the limit. If he stays there, yeah, he probably snaps that Gas Gas streak too quick. Okay, always fascinating stuff from you, Clinton. So how about that? We have identified the longest dry spell for our manufacturer in the history of Supercross has now come to an end with Roxon ending that for Suzuki. You got more stuff lined up for this weekend on Race Day Live? Always, always, Weege. We'll have followers film room and a bunch more for you on Race Day Live. Looking forward to seeing you in Detroit. Okay, that's it for this episode of SMX Insider. We're going to Detroit. Normal times you can watch just like Indy, 1.30 Eastern will be the start of Race Day Live on Peacock. And then our night show racing starts at 7, also on Peacock. And don't forget, supermotocross.com for the exclusive post-race show.
Hi folks, Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.